Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your host, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL, right to UFC, and boxing. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code, that's BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers podcast. I'm Marcus Dash, here with legendary 76ers point guard, Eric Snow, and my brother, Tasia Dash. A lot of rumors going around. A uh, lot of stuff to get into today on the show, so we're going to kind of just dump, jump right into it. Um, first it's one... season. I know, it's just a season of rumors. Um... Uh, I think every episode we, we have, there's there's a new like star player being mentioned with the Sixers being attached to the Sixers, um, which is which is fun. Um, but I guess we'll see how things go. But uh, I want to ask you guys about uh, a certain player that uh, is being attached to the 76ers. Um, so Vegas odds have come out on Bradley Beal's next team, um, and obviously the highest favorite is for him to stay in Washington. But the next team uh, to the Wizards is the 76ers. And then with that, uh, Bill Simmons on his uh, podcast this week said, uh, quote, my odds on favorite is Philadelphia, and I don't think it's close. Beal and Joel Embiid, they are friends. and Embiid was trying to get him two years ago, which I kept telling people on this podcast. They ended up going with Harden instead. Embiid was pushing for Harden or for Beal, uh, and now Harden's going to leave. If you are Philly and you're going to lose Harden and now have this sh- shooter, and that's probably a better fit with Embiid anyway – and Tobias Harris on an expiring contract, a couple of future draft picks. I could probably throw that. I could probably find in my pocket somewhere. And if you're Washington, it's like, you know what we've got out of the Beal contract. We have Harris as an expiring, and we are rebo- rebooting everything. So my question is, and this is what everyone's talking about right now, would you rather have Beal and a contract that he has? He's four years left. Um, it's like a $250 million deal. Um, or this hardened kind of limbo of what what he wants right now because we don't really know what he wants. We want he wants a max, but you also have Beal's two hundred fifty million dollar deal. Of those two, which are you guys kind of uh, looking towards as something that you'd rather go to? And also with this Beal thing, you give up Tobias Harris in that in this hypothetical, and you also lose Harden uh, in free agency. So, what are you guys going with on this one? So you're saying basically it's it's Beal Harden. And then get a replacement for Harris or Beal and no Harden or Harris. Exactly. Yeah. Mm, that's interesting. I actually can, I can see a, a a team like that. I can I can see a team with. And you said we're keeping Maxi because I know that our last show you said Maxi was leaving. Well, that was yeah, that was a Kuzma two for two deal. But okay. yeah. Um. I would probably do that. Now, we if we get finagle Kuzma, that'd be, I'd be over the moon. I, 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 I would, I would, I would be okay with that. I don't necessarily know how it would work, but I would be okay with that. Um, I think we would need to get more. I think we would have to, you know, like I don't know. Maybe Taja can help me out on on. That's not an even trade, is it? Um, like, you, you can bring back exceptions with that. Yeah, you can bring back a certain percentage. So as is. Harris for Beal would work. It would be a little better if we could throw in like another five million, which would be Irk. But as is, it would work. As, is Irk on the end of his deal? Last year of his deal? Yeah, they're both expiring. So yeah, I, I can see um, Winger doing Winger doing that um, and, and adding somebody else. I just don't know the the Wizards roster to see if there's anyone else that could fit that could help. Um, yeah, they have a lot with, of maybe with some size or something. Yeah, it's tough. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do like it. I, I would, I think it's a little incomplete. You know, what I'm saying um, just a straight up. Um, but if you think a straight up for Tobias, yeah, obviously you do that. Um, losing James, um, 
him and Maxi and Bill can work. I think you, you have to address the forward position. Yeah, I mean, would they be able to? Would we be able to keep all the other free agents if we needed to in that situation? I think that would be. I mean, that would be the ideal thing. You probably resign McDaniel's, resign um, Paul Reed. Yeah, because you're not getting two players back. You're you're losing two and yeah. one, right? So, and that's and that's why I'm saying, will we still have ability to go get something else? Because it's. Two I, I think we'd have – if we did that, we would have access to our full yeah. um, MLE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which, which this year I think will get you – That's, a, little, that's the point that I'm talking about. Player, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like you can pick up one or two guys and really help yourself. Yeah, I think this year most – more than others, you'll get a good player. I, I would have to think about it a little more, but I'm not necessarily opposed to that. I, I think that that could – I think that could work, especially if Joel is playing the way he's playing and Maxie's playing the way he's played. Um, if we're able to get a full mid level, um, bring some and bring the other free agents back, I, I can make that run. I mean, if you look at um, Denver, that's the type of team they got. They play seven guys. Really? I mean, the other Brown, I mean, he plays sparingly. Um, you know, the kid from Kansas, I mean, he doesn't play. You know what I'm saying? He didn't play very much against the Lakers. He's playing – played more this series. But, yeah, they, they basically play seven full-time guys. Yeah. And one of those guys, nobody wanted. Yeah. And, he, and he's playing really well. Bruce Brown playing really well. Yeah, I think if we wanted to become more of a Denver, I think that would mean it all really depends on what kind of deal. Now, I'm not saying like Denver. I'm just saying like where you have guys fitting into a specific role of what they do best. Oh, uh, okay. I thought you meant like they, they, as far they, as how money is distributed. No, no, not the money. I'm just talking about as far as role uh, personnel. It's like yeah. not many guys. You got Murray. You got Jokic. Obviously, that that can do so many different things great, but every everybody else is kind of fitting into a role. Yeah, you know, green, who's brown, you know what I'm saying? They all fit a row. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's like with this lineup, the Sixers could have they're big, they can have Joel, two guys that can do a lot of everything really well and score it, and everybody else fits a row. That, that's what I'm saying. It, it fits that mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um I, I like and dislike it. I'll, I'll say why. So I like it because I don't think we're going to do much better in a one-on-one -on -one deal for Harris as far as field goes. I don't think we get a higher valued player than that. Um, Chicago guys, if for some reason they come in. Yeah. Yeah. That's, hey, that's hey, the only hey, thing I consider. Yeah. And I would be in favor of that mostly for the money because I think Levine and Beal are pretty comparable, and I think he makes like – I think Levine makes like 10 less, 12 less than him. So he's that's younger. Yeah, that, that's that's also true too. Um, but in general, there aren't a lot. And I think I think we'd have to because because Levine's contract's a little more favorable. We probably have to give up a little more to get Levine. So uh, but in general, I don't think there's much better we can do than a Beal Levine level player. I don't think we're getting, you know, a top five player, top ten player out of this. Um and I I think even though the C the CBA is changing things on how uh, teams are going to structure their contracts and, and and just structure their teams in general and, and clear up their cap, I think Maury's still kind of in star hunting mode, and I, I think he, I think he's still in the gather the best biggest names possible, and then we'll figure out the rest later type. Um, he's been doing that since Houston. I think he's going to continue to do it now, even with the new CBA rules coming out. I don't think he cares. So I, I dislike it. Because I personally, I think we'd be better suited to pick up multiple contracts for Tob Tobias's contract. I'd rather pick up like, let's say him and Ferk, they equal about forty-five million. I'd rather pick up like a twenty-five million dollar player and like a twenty million dollar player than pick up like one Beal. I'd rather have two guys averaging like fifteen to eighteen a game rather than Beal's averaging like twenty-three to twenty-five a game. Like I'd 
for instance, I'd rather have like a, a Gordon and, a, and a, an MPJ type to fill out the, the starting five. Because that's kind of what the, the contract would be struggling, like the, the equals in a way. Um, I just think it would be better for our overall just spreading it out rather than like if one guy's a bad game, you're screwed. Because the other guy is more of like an eight to 10 point score a game. Now you need him to score 20, which is a little out of his way, right? Whereas you, you would, you would, you would think that if James was going to. So here's the thing. If you just split up Toby to get like two guys, then you would keep hard. So you have Harden, you'd have Maxi. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's two different things though. You're, we're looking at it. Are we looking at it from a standpoint of James being gone or James staying? Because you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. If James is staying, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, I'll take that. Um, then you can decide whether you want to bring Maxi as a you know six man or you know hard or play all three. Like, but you know, yeah. I, I don't think it's a fit to have all three. Um, but but that's what I'm saying. It's like I I just think I looked at it from a standpoint if Tobias is going for Bill and if Bill is coming, the fact that him Maxi and James all play the same position. That for some reason you're doing that to go in a different direction. Maybe it's Maxi that goes, and not necessarily James. Yeah, I'm just saying from a standpoint of then the whole Bill and Kuzma comes into play. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I I think from that standpoint it's tough because you giving up Tobias and not getting James. Which you address, you getting a really good player, and you're addressing your guard position because Maxi can move to one, but you're you're also taking out another starter, so you're really losing two starters for one. And that's why I said I like it, but it but that mid level and who you get for that would really kind of confirm it or not confirm it. Yeah, so it's kind of hard. That's why I say it feels it's kind of incomplete because you don't know what could happen behind it because more would need to be done to me for it to be complete. And I'll end it on this too. So I, I did a player one and player two Um, player one averaged 21, eight, three, 21, eight and three on 43% from three player two averaged 23, four and five on 37% from three. Player one is Tobias coming from the Clippers that year. And player two is Beal last year. So <laughs> we're getting practically the same stats from a smaller guy who's less, has less defensive versatility for about $10 million. So you have 90% of Sixer fans complaining now about Tobias's 36, 37, 38 million. What the hell are people going to say about Beal in three years when he's making like sixty? Oh, I mean, all you got to do is go and look and see the what people are saying about him it, with Wizards. Yeah, I mean, but that comes down to winning, though. Yeah, there. I mean, Philly, it comes down to winning too. If you go and you perform and we win, the, the, the talk will be less. Mm-hmm. They're so torn, though. We, we we know a lot of uh, Wizards fans being from from the I mean, area. But you know, to to and once again to Tobias's defense, he was paid that salary to have a bigger role than he has. Yes, yep. yeah, he was paid that salary to continue on what he was doing on the Clippers. Yes. Me yes. twenty one eight and three, and, and right. we decided to go get other guys, and you know, yeah, money still there. And B will be making that money while having a larger role than what Tobias is having now, though. So, I mean, you, you, it won't be the same type of complaints people will, will have. No, they'll still have it. It, it, it won't be. But, but here's the thing. If he's averaging 23, 4, and 5 on 37% as the main guy on his offense, what's going to happen when you have Maxi taking 18 shots a game and, and no, he, he, he'll, 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 a game? He'll, he'll be more efficient. He'll be I more hope, efficient. I would hope, yeah, I'd hope so. You know I'm saying he'll be more efficient because he won't be playing – as the number one option, he'll be more efficient. Like Max, he's never played at being the number one option. Those guys have the luxury of playing with a guy that's been the number one option. So we 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 see. I think Max, he could still score the ball, not being around Joel, but his efficiency, I, I think, would may suffer. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, with someone like James, when he's not the number one option, he provides 
a lot of other things that boosts value to his overall, you know, status. And, as a and I believe that Maxi can do that. What James can do if we give him the ball, average eleven assists. If we give him the ball, he don't have the ball. It's true. I, I mean, there's guys that can average eleven assists if they have high volume, like James does. Yeah, maybe not eleven, but they can average nine. That was no. eight, nine. I don't know if he's the natural point guard. James is though. James is a natural player. You said they, there was a time when no one thought James was. Yeah, that's no, true. That's true. And, and and people still think that. And he's average eleven cents. Yeah. Yeah. But when I'm you just... have a, when you have a high volume in this league, and you can play <laughs> like you can, you can get assists. Yeah, I would just be, I would just be worried about that contract looking being the same exact place we are with Tobias in like two years. And, and then, then you, when, then why would you not worry about James getting that contract? Oh, I am, I am. Okay. All right, as long as, as long as we understand that, because James could possibly possibly make more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you were to say, but if you were to break this down and say, would you rather have? Harden for 35 per year or Beal for 50? Harden for 35, right? Yeah, that's not – 35 is not going to happen. No, but like, would you – you'd say yes to that? Harden for 30 – okay. Harden for 35 for four years? So 35, 37, you know. Or no, I guess it would be like 30. That's the part that we're getting into. I don't – like I said, I think the money James will make it, I think it's going to come down to the years. I don't think he's going to settle for two years in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and be like, give me the years, give me the money. Then if y'all like me, then trade me. That's on y'all. But mm. I earned it. Look at my numbers. I earned it. That's it's tough. It's gonna be a tough situation. It is tough. I wish. I mean, yeah, yeah. And looking at the at the age aspect of things, Beal's twenty nine. By the time his contract's done, he'll be thirty three. Harden's thirty three right now. So when that whenever it's three or four years, it'll be 36, 37. So true, but I mean, you could be 24. Durability is durability. Harden averaged more games played over the last five seasons than Beal has. As the number one option, though, if he's uh, never three. Harden in the last couple of years has missed some games, but he ain't played with, you know, Bill ain't played with KD and Joel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trust me, trust me, he'll be healthier with those guys. <laughs> uh, oh really? You go know, just turn that on, huh? Just turn that switch yeah. on. Yeah, and, and them teams don't sit you out as much either. Well, ironically, Simmons said that he would have Beal most likely would have been a Sixer two years ago, or I guess now two years ago because the new league's about to start. Uh, two years ago, it but Beal opted to have the surgery on his hand, which which ruined the entire plan. So ironically, his injury stopped him from becoming a possible Sixer. So yeah, I don't know about all that, but yeah, it's like, like you know, him and Joel were friends. That is that what they said? That's what Simmons yeah. said, yeah. Yeah, these guys got so many friends in this league. Yeah, they're all <laughs> every, time, every time something comes out, they're, they're friends and best friend. I'm like, I thought he was he was really good friends with Tatum, too. So you know, yeah. Well, him and Tatum is yeah, that's the St. Louis thing. So I get that. I understand that, like, you know, because they're from the same area. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And he played for Tatum played for his Bradley's team, so that's it is a relationship there. That's a relationship. Well, I'm, I'm sure there is. I'm not just, just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying like, guys, it's like every time somebody's name come up, it's like they're best friend, and I've never seen them together, never heard anything before, and now all of a sudden they're best buddies. Mm -hmm. I mean, like LeBron, they got LeBron got so many best friends around the league. It's like <laughs> my guys can know each other without being best friends. They just know each other. That's all. They don't want to be best friends. Best friends, I love that. Yeah, like that's his buddy. Like, like, third, like third, like third graders. Yeah, that's friend, buddy. <laughs> really close and like, stop it. No, they aren't. <laughs> yeah, well, in the in that uh, the Simmons podcast, he he said that when we were trying to make that Ben Simmons trade, a reason why it took longer was because MB was vying for the Beal trade package, whereas Maury wanted to get Harden. So there was kind of the internal struggle of Harden or Beal, and then when he had the surgery, that's when they were like, okay, let's go ahead and go at, let's go get um Harden. So that was, yeah. I'm not getting into the guessing, but okay, sounds good. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with this uh, Bradley Beal stuff. But fun, man. Uh, do, you, I, I do, you, do you do you think there's a chance they're maybe saying 
as crazy as it sounds with all the CBA restrictions, going to Harden and being like, we could possibly get Beal if you take X amount of dollars, we can keep you and get Bradley. Or would that just be like yeah, I'm sure they could mention that. They can I'm sure they can mention I'm that. sure they're trying. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they can they they I don't know if they would throw Bradley's name in there. Um they would probably say, Hey, you know, if 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 he takes this salary this amount of years, you know, we can get another all star quality player in here. Let let me ask you, would you if we could do that? But will be an absolute cap hell, restricted, hard capped, no more like aggregating salaries, none of the no. trades, none of that. Would you? I, do I, that? I, I think you. I think right now, like I said before, that I didn't see this team with Joel having a five, six year span. I'm still firm with that. I thought it was two or three years for them to go for it. I think they need to do whatever they need to do right now to go to win the championship, whatever it takes. So you'd say be all whatever it takes. Make it work. Pay whatever pay, it takes to the, okay. to the max that you can go. Okay. Do you think Harden, Maxi, Beal? I don't know what it can be. I'm not saying I know what it is. I'm saying I think they need to go for it, however they deem to be the correct way or the most possible way to do that. I'm not saying that the the Beal Harden combination is what it will take. I'm just saying whatever it takes to get to that point. Why you have Joel playing the way he's playing is what we need to do. Yeah. Agreed. Wait, Taylor, you, you think there's a possibility where we would be able to keep Maxi and all of that it, and we, if we were to get uh, um, Beal and keep Harden? Sure. I mean, if you just you, – you'd be, you'd be restricted. You couldn't do anything. That would be our team for the next, like, however many years. If you if you could get it done, I'm not, like, a cap specialist. But, I mean, we have, we have Harris right now. He's making 40. We have hard making 35. So we do, we are spending that money. The only thing we'd be doing is paying Maxi on top of that. Now, what could you do with Melton? What could you do with Jay McDaniels? Well, I mean, yeah, you'd have tough decisions to make. You probably have to fill the rest of your roster with vet minimums. That if that's what going for it means, keeping hard and maxi, Beal and B, and then figuring out the rest, then maybe he's gonna try that. I, I don't know. I, I could it be possible? I mean, I guess it could if you just you'd be stuck with that team. You'd be stuck for at least like four or five years. It's a fun team to be stuck with, though. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure Nets fans were saying that too before they where when they acquired uh the hard the Harden Kyrie and, and Durant trio though. That's true. So it can become a nightmare pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so uh, obviously, in, in less speculative news, uh, this weekend the Sixers have hired their first assistant on the uh, Nick Nurse staff and bringing in uh, former Sacramento Kings point guard Bobby Jackson, also uh, assistant coach with the Sacramento Kings. Um, he's been on the staff since 2011 uh, and just re- recently coached their G League teams uh, since 2021. So what do you guys make of the first uh, hire to the Nick Nurse staff? Uh, Eric, do you, do you know Bobby Jackson uh, personally? I don't, I don't know Bobby personally. I mean, I know him from playing, playing against him. Um, good dude from what I hear. Um, he's been in Sacramento, has done a good job and really um, thought of out there. Um, so I don't know the connection to him and Nurse. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, me Happy to see a guy get an opportunity. Um, didn't come from Sacramento, but you know, hopefully that you know, he could be helpful. I know he played the game well, and he was a really big part of their team, so I know he can help the guys. Um, just from a, a former player's perspective, and being able to get in there and encourage them in knowing situations um, through experience. So it's, it's definitely a guy. You know, not saying that he's going to be like Sam, but in that mold, um, you know, to be able to give insight. And be able to truly relate to what guys are experiencing and going through. Yeah, but as far as their connection and how it's going to work in his role, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Right. Maybe he can talk. Maybe Harrison Barnes and taking the uh, the 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 the, the TM of uh, the um, mid level. Mid level. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A guy like Harrison is interesting. To see yeah. you know, what, what he's offered. Yeah, in the case where you, let's say you did the Beal, and let's say you lost Harris, and you wanted to replace Harris. Harrison Barnes, I would take that in the heartbeat. That's pretty if good. Harrison is the guy, I would take that. 
That's pretty. That's pre, That's a pretty good substitution. Beal and Harrison Barnes yes. coming in for Harden and and Tobias. Yeah. Harrison can play three or four. Um, but Bobby Jackson, same staff for twelve years. That's that's impressive. Uh, I I don't know much about Jackson. I'm not going to pretend to be uh, an expert on Bobby Jackson, but I trust fans' reactions when a player or coach leaves, because that's when you you usually get the most honest take about a guy who leaves their team, because then all the truth comes out. Like, oh, I'm so glad he's gone finally, or all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, from what I've seen in all the, the threads on Twitter. Uh, Kings fans are either really happy for him or really pissed off and sad to see him go. So, of course, there are a couple like psychopaths, but then you know it's, it's social media. Um, but for the most part, that's that's pretty much it. Is that because he's a great coach, or is that because he's pretty much a legacy? He's, of this he's a Sacramento guy. That's, that's yeah. what, twenty. That's what I said. He's really well, you know, really thought of out there. Yeah, and you know, you know, they went a different way. So, you know. Why didn't he get an opportunity with Mike? I don't know. Maybe Mike came in, and, but Mike, Doug Christie's there with Mike, so yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it was just you know, Mike's going to have his own guys, and it's an opportunity for him. Trust me, I know coaching is not an easy profession to get into. Um, how well you can coach, or how much you know, um, doesn't seem to always matter. Mm. But yeah, well, I mean, I guess we'll see. Uh, it's good for a foreign to have a foreign player on the staff, that's for sure. I mean, it doesn't replace Cassell because I don't know what each one of them, you know, will offer in terms of you know yeah. relation with each other. But it's another former player who's been, has got a lot of experience, so it's great. Yeah. No, and I think the version of that would have been Cassell with us because I mean, I, I don't think I saw anybody who was happy that he was. Yeah, I mean, but us. we, I mean, it, but we just don't know if Rob, if Bobby's going to have that role. Like we don't know. Yeah. So we'll see. But uh, Eric, you know more than, than we would, but when I guess when you're the first assistant hire, does that mean you kind of have more of a prior or are you like the, the first assistant off the bench? Like let's say if nurse was, does that not mean that? Didn't they just say that Sam was hired by Boston and another guy came behind him. This is going to be associated coach. Oh, uh, I, I didn't know that. Dang. Right. They just, they just hired the bucks assistant, right? Yeah, as the associate head coach. Was it Charlie? I would be higher than Sam. Charlie Smith, that's his name? I, I don't know his name, but he was the guy that was up for a couple of head coaching jobs. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, no, the timing of when you hire somebody has nothing to do with it. That's, that's just me. that's just people in the media running with it mm -hmm. and then wanting to be first to announce it and all that stuff. You know how that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's what I'm saying. I don't. We don't know his role. We don't know if he's going to be one of the bench coaches or not. Yeah. Because the, the, the whole thing last week was that Cassell, uh, Cassell's hire puts a Missoula in the hot seat. If he doesn't look good, they're going to just uh, promote uh, Cassell to the head coach's position. So, yeah, that's that's interesting. They hired also somebody else. Who would be the when, you're a, when you're a coach on a kind of like shaky end of year, does it worry you to have such like high-level assistance? I mean, I, I, I've seen it both ways. I mean, I've, I've played for some coaches that, you know, don't even think about whether a system would take their place. And I've played where, and I've seen some where some assistants are a little worried and who the guys are talking to and why are they talking, you know what I'm saying? But to me, that's more about who that person is more so than the coaching. But sure. yeah, I've seen, I've seen that both ways. Okay. Yeah. I can imagine. That's why, that's why coaches want to hire their own guys. Yes. Yeah. And GMs yeah. want to not, GMs don't want them to hire their own guy. <laughs> yeah. They want to put the GMs want to put their spies in there, and the coaches don't want their spies in there. Mm. Yeah, I'm well, joking, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, yeah, there have been stories like that in sports. Oh yeah, yeah but yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just, you know, people, you know, claiming who they're loyal to. Even even bringing their players on to be a spy for the players for them. Mm -hmm. I've, definitely, I've definitely heard those stories in the NFL. That's very, it's very common in the NFL. Um, uh, but it, it also is good to have. We know uh, Maury and Nurse already have a good relationship, so you know it's not like it's not one of the situations where someone forced Maury to hire him or something. They're cool, so that's good. Yeah, it's always exciting to have um, ex NBA players on the staff, um, just because sure. you know you, you guys have been there before. You know you, you you know what it's like to be out there on the court. I sometimes you know. 
not knocking the guys who didn't play the game at the highest level, but you know, sometimes no, you know, I think it's a place for everyone. I mean, I think it's a place for people that didn't know the game that came up through the um, their path is different. Um, but you know, the one thing that a lot of those people that came up that way will never have that they, they'll never have the experience of actually playing on the court. Um, yeah, and there is something about that. There is something that you can always give for knowing that experience and how it feels. Um, not that everybody can articulate that in coaching or mm-hmm. speak to other people and be able to have a person that personality to deliver that information and a timely information. Um, then that comes down to the person that's giving that information. Mm-hmm. Can you speak it? Can you speak it well? Can you relate to a person? Can you get them to understand and listen? Can you do it in a timely manner where it's efficient for them to understand it and then understand it? to where they feel like when they go out on the court, they've done it before or heard it before. Yep. Now that's where it's different. Not everybody mm-hmm. can do that. They can just tell you, but it's an art of kind of relating that information too, to yep. where the guy can receive it. Cause it's not about you giving it. It's about them receiving it. Yeah. Well said. Uh, and also, uh, I think the, I think I read a report that the Sixers are interviewing uh, Rico Hines to be a potential assistant. Rico. Uh, I hope Rico come, man. Would, would that be a good addition? Yes, Rico's awesome. See, I know Rico personally really well. Uh, a lot of guys, you hear about the guys working out at UCLA and all that, where Rico yep. runs all that. Yep. Um, and I can see that because remember I told you guys that Toronto used to go out and work out with Rico, their team. Yeah. So I, I can see that. With, not, not that right there, I kind of see the connection. Um, but Rico would be great. It would be very helpful, especially for the younger guys. That's cool. And we we have the inside scoop with you with uh with Rico. <laughs> That'd be cool. Um okay, so uh next topic. Um so this has gotten some traction over the last couple days. Uh, I know a couple weeks ago we had mentioned it as a possibility, but Ramona Shelburne went on a radio show talking about there's a ch- potential chance that James Harden could end up with Phoenix. Um, so this is now talking more now than ever of a Chris Paul to Philadelphia situation as far as a a potential uh, trade there. Um, so if a Chris Paul uh, trade went down uh, for Harden, uh, what would be the pluses and minuses of that? I'm seeing Eric's face right now. <laughs> um, it right. would be, it would be a better fit. Um, Harden with Phoenix or CP3 with Philadelphia. Oh goodness. <laughs> Are we seriously having this conversation? <laughs> Man, they're not going to trade James for CP3. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We, we wouldn't. No. Okay, so you're saying we wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. No. It would have to be a third team then, right, in order to kind of facilitate a three-team trade. Yeah, I just don't see them. I don't see them doing that. I think they would address the the, the shooting guard position and move Maxi to the point before they do that. Yeah. Or go get Fred Van Vliet, the guy that we talked about before. Like I, I, I do not see that happening. I, I don't think that they'll trade James to go get a guy that's older than them. Do you think they would just lose James for nothing before doing this? Yes. Really? Yes. I think they'll do a sign and trade and get a trade exception before they do that. What if, what if he just walks or 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 trade? No trade exception. If he walks. He's going to take the sign and trade because he can get paid more and it'll help the other team because it, it, you he's able to use his bird rights instead of them using all of their salary. The salary cap space. If he did the full max, but what if? What if, for instance, we all go? I think James would use his bird rights. He's earned that. He's going to use that, and that's why you do a sign and trade for him to use that for the Sixers to get a pick or something back and a trade exception. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think they do that before they make that trade. Because I just don't think that they'll trade James for a guy that's older than him. And Chris is good. I just don't think they do it for an older guy. Do you think Paul would be a bad uh, component here? I, I I just think that if you're going to trade, I would. I just think that they would move Maxi to one before they trade and put Chris. Chris. In. Yes. Yeah. But you still have Maxi here. Yeah. If you make that that trade, 
I just don't think that they're going to trade James for an older player in which there's talk of James not being the same. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we don't, if we're not tolerant toward James's decline into old, older age, then we're certainly not going to be tolerant towards Chris Paul's. Yes. Because he's even older, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's showing. Because Chris, you know, Chris yeah. used to be just zipping through guys. Yeah. Very, still very efficient, but yeah, obviously, you know, he's older. And just durability, too. He's just not, he doesn't end the year healthy. Well, I mean, we know about that. I'm just saying he's just – he's an older – he's older. He's older than James. I just – I'm not even – look. I don't even think he comes down to talent. I'm just saying from a standpoint of I just don't see them making a move to trade James and bring back an older guy on the same amount of money. I just don't see that happening. Well, it depends what James wants to sign for. It might not be the same kind of money. I mean, the same enough, enough to make the trade, whatever that percentage yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Paul, because Paul makes it has to be within a certain percentage to make the trade, correct? Um, yes, yeah, so the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah be, I know it used to be within ten percent. I don't know what it is now. I don't. But know. it used to be within ten percent. It would depend on the contract. Yeah, it would depend. On, it really, it would really depend on his. I think from what I've read from other people that that try to go down this road of speculating it, they said he might have to. To make the trade work, if he's that dying to go to Phoenix that bad, he might have to just opt into this year, and then they'd have to just extend him next year. Yeah, I mean, because Chris isn't free this year. No, like he has a buyout. Partially yeah, has not buyout, but he has a half year, yeah, partially, half guaranteed. partially guaranteed deal. Yeah, that I think they have to make a decision on. I think by the July first. So. Yeah. 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 As far I mean, like as far as play, you I do mean, that for Chris for one year. Well, he I think he has he's he's nothing's guaranteed next year, but he is under contract for next year too. If so nothing's he's, guaranteed, then he's not under contract. Well, they can they can we can the team can opt out. That's I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If nothing's guaranteed. Yeah, you, you consider yourself not under contract. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're going to come have, you know, unless the old CP numbers are going to show up. I think the only way you do it, and that's why I was trying to speculate, the only way you do it is if the worst case scenario happens, Houston offers him just the most money, and it's not even the max, and we and, and he just walks. Then you'd say, okay, you have two options. Either walks for nothing, or you do the CP3 trade. That I think that would be the only way. Other than that, I, I would go with the trade exception. I would go with Figuring out you walk for nothing and, and do the do that trade, you still gotta realize that you're sitting in the Phoenix too. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing them a favor. Mm -hmm. And are you doing yourself a favor at the same time? That's the question. Yeah. Yes. You can't just be favored for one and not favored for the other. Whatever yep. it is. You have to majorly, if you did that, I mean, talk about managing minutes and, and games played. <laughs> Because Nurse has been known to ride his starters pretty hard. You aren't riding 38-year-old Chris Paul during the regular season. And you're not there's no way you can do that. So, so I'm just, you know, I just I just don't see, I don't I don't see it happening. I just don't yeah. see the move. James yes. for, for Chris. I don't see it. Yes, yeah, Suns fans for a, a larger some of the ones I've seen on Twitter, most of them are saying they do not want Harden because they think uh, Booker showed that he can play the point guard in this, this past postseason this year, and they don't really need Paul or Harden to kind of man the point this year. They can kind of let him ride as the, as the point guard and just fill pieces around him. So that's what the Suns contingency is uh, saying. And a lot of the bigger Suns accounts say there's, like, absolutely no traction to this and no way this happens. So Yeah, I mean, Suns' issue coming out of the playoffs was death, not yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, because they okay. cut it for Durant. Yeah. yeah. He gave up two guys for Durant, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, two major, you know. I was saying they gave up two guys. Like, yeah, two 30 minute players. We gave up two guys for we gave up three guys for James Harden. Yeah. Curry, Drummond, and, and uh, Simmons. Oh, oh sorry. I wasn't even counting Simmons. He wasn't playing. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking of guys on the court. I was like, wait, we did? I was like, oh, oh, oh that's right. The guy who refused to show up. 
<laughs> um, all right, so we're going to get to our final topic here. Um, so back to the, 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 the numbers game, James Harden. Um, so uh, recently Mark Stein said uh, on his a podcast uh, that a, a Eastern Conference executive told him uh, that Harden, his status as a max alpha player in this league is over. He can't produce wins. He can get numbers. He can help a team, but he's not a max player anymore. You can't justify it paying him the max. Um, and then also Stephen A. Smith said that uh, there was kind of a, on today, today's first take show, he said that um, pretty much when Harden left Houston, he kind of had a handshake deal with uh, Fertilla or Fertitta, whatever yeah. it was. Fertitta, um, saying that pretty much uh, let me go try to chase the ring for the next few years. But uh, when I when, when I want to come back, we'll probably we'll, we'll try to make it work for you. But he said that Houston's not offering him any more than two years. Two years is the max they're going to offer him. So they're not getting him a long term deal that he wants. Um, so that's also out there as well. Uh, but what do you guys think about this Eastern Conference uh, executives quote about this? And was the likelihood that this is Maury uh, that said this to get a cheaper deal out of James Harden? <laughs> <laughs> more got the burner account yeah, yeah. we're gonna look at Stein. We have some burner accounts and all this stuff. Did we go we're gonna that? look at stein's phone log and it's gonna be daryl mori uh mori's phone call right before that article came out uh yeah. man look man, i don't put anything past this this oh do i think it was daryl mori i hope not do i would i be surprised if it was not at all Hey man, if it saves him five or ten million a year, he'll absolutely send that tax down. Um, man, I think with James, he's he's another your number two option. On well, some nights, he's number three. On a few, he's number one. Um, yeah, that's that's typically not a max player anymore, based on what's expected from him. Um, but there's been guys that get max player max money. Their maximum um, that did comparable to what he's doing. Yeah. Um, are you paying James for right now or in the future? Or are you paying him for what he's done? Yeah. Um, what's his max, Taser? Four to 10. If we sign him? Yes. Four for 210. So fifty two and a half. Yeah, I I think it's gonna be hard for for Maury to to do that. Um just because he'll be thirty eight, what, thirty eight, thirty nine when it's over. He's thirty three right now, so yeah, four years thirty seven. Thirty seven. But I think he's turning maybe turning thirty four worth this. That's what I'm saying. What, what age will he be during the season? Thirty four. I think he I think he'd be thirty eight going to that year. Or in that season, last season. In that last season, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, he he turned uh, 34 uh, in August, so yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so he'll be. Yeah, he'll be turning. He'll be, yeah. Um, that's, that's, and a lot of people I know that when they changed that rule, that was in place when um, a couple of years ago, when how Chris and Paul and those guys were able to get those contracts at an older age, they changed that rule. I think it's going to be tough. I, I, I think it's tough because I don't think that um, teams will commit four years to James. So I don't know if James will have the leverage. I think Houston comes into play because we all know Houston would like to have him back. I'm not sure. You know, I'm not saying that Stephen A's correct or incorrect. But I've said it before. It's going to come down to the years with James. That's what it's going to come down to. And I think his decision on where he goes or what he does will be based on that. I mean, do you give him a, a max for two years? Give him less for four. I don't have to make that decision. And, um, you know, I'm happy about that right now. But they get paid the big bucks to make those decisions. And ownership has to okay it. You just have to convince them of why. Or why not? So speaking on that, I, I read a um, a pretty popular Houston account on Twitter. Um, he, and he said a few days ago, uh, heard mixed things. Um, the general themes I've heard are he isn't, Harden does not have a max offer on the table. Harden wants to go back to Houston as his first choice. And the Rockets are not enthusiastic, as enthusiastic about the reunion as he is. 
Um, so with all these reports, it's funny that his leverage with Houston every day and every week with all these new reports are, are, are just lowering that actually. Because it started around Christmas when we first heard that report about him in Houston. And then we we're like, what the hell is this coming from? That's when the seed kind of got planted and then it sprouted. But now it's starting to kind of die off a little bit. Now you're hearing Stephen A pretty much putting his like sources clout on the line with, when he said that, by the way. Because after that, he said, I know a lot more than I usually speak on. So this, he was kind of. He said that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. After he said this, he said, mind you, I, I know a lot more. I've been reporting on the NBA for a long, long time. Uh, I, I know a lot more than I actually speak on. Um, and he's, so, and I've also heard he's, he's friendly with Fertitta. So doesn't shock me at all if he's. Yeah, I, mean, I also think um, with them hiring Ime, it, it, I think he could have some say in it and say in the direction, you know, another direction. Are they, are they just going to go young and get a couple veterans to fill in around those guys? Yeah, because I heard they want – everyone's doing trade uh, uh, scenarios of them getting another star. I heard they want a second – if they did get hard, they want a second guy with him. So giving him $50 million doesn't really help them do that. So it's like even if they get him, they want a deal too. It's like it – yeah, I'm not yeah. – It's not only Philly that wants to do that. You know, if they want to get – I've seen trades with, you know, getting cat. For uh, for Houston, yeah, I'm interested. It's interesting. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. We'll see. Um, but I think he's. A, I think he's a great point guard. I don't know if he's a top 10, 15 player anymore, and he's not. Um, but that's what that contract he wants is. It's top like ten money. So I know we always talk about player performance. I mean, you, you, whatever, what you can get is what you can get. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, We've had that conversation a lot. Yeah, what you can get is what, what they're willing to give you is what you work. But with this new CBA stuff, too, it's just bad timing for James, really. What they're, what they're willing to give you is what you're worth, whether we think it or no, not uh, we. Yeah. Whether it's Asia think it or not. Um, <laughs> but, hey, I got to say, all these news reports coming out, Stephen A, this dude, it's good for – it's bringing that – it sounds like it's bringing the years and or price down. Uh, for whoever gets him in the All end. I know is we'll find out. Pretty yeah. Soon. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll do, see. Do, do, you, do you think after all this kind of talk, let's say the offers are like Chris Polish, like th- $30 million, right? Two years, third year uh, team option. Do you think there's a chance? Because he hasn't opted out yet. There's a chance he opts in? Yeah. You think he can still it for just one more year? Yeah, I think there's a chance, but I, I don't think he will. Because I think he'll – he'll. if James goes out in the market and his agent puts out that he's willing to take less, there'll be a lot more people coming after him. Yeah. So yeah. I believe if he takes less, his options go up and all of a sudden you make a decision. He, he knows the Sixers have – like I said, they have his bird rights, so he can make the most there. Mm-hmm. And in order to make the most outside of there is to do a sign and trade with your bird rights. That's how you maximize your, your contract. Yeah. So I'm not sure that he goes out on his own um, and, and sign. That's where the Houston thing comes in because they could probably do it. Yeah. It made the most sense. It was best, definitely the best leverage play by him. Houston. Yes. It was a great card to play. And he, and he's, they started that early. Yeah. December they started that. Yeah, I, that I, I said it back then. Like, yeah, I think this is a leverage play, but we'll see. Six month leverage play. Well done. Yeah, we'll see. If he opt, if he opts in, um, if that does happen, what would that put us cap wise? I mean, would that be would that be good for us, or would that technically, be technically it's on our cap right now until he opts out? So that yeah. that's already built baked in, really. Okay. Yeah. Um. You just got the years behind it you have to add. Yeah, yeah. So right now it's already baked in. We would just need to figure out at that point, we would just turn our sights to Tobias and figuring that out. That could be an interesting route to go. 
We'll see. Uh, Ten days from today is the NBA draft, so we're getting close to like the, the real deal, Holyfield. The, the good stuff coming. Like I can't, I, I can't wait. I keep reading reports. There's going to be just a massive because of the lack of money out there, and because of the uncertainty behind the new restrictions. There's going to be a massive amount of trades. Mm-hmm. So. so, yeah, and apparently the Sixers are interested in maybe trading into like the mid second rounds to get in. Um, apparently, we're very interested in Emily Bates. Uh, Eric, you uh, you a fan? Uh, I'm not familiar with this guy, but okay. I'll, I'll let you know. All right. He's an Eastern Michigan guy. I believe he transferred from – is he a man? I think he was a man. Oh, Imani, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imani, yeah, yeah. Imani, yeah. Okay, I mispronounced You it. said Anthony, man. I don't know Anthony Bates, man. I, 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 said, I, I said Emini Bates, but <laughs> – Emini. <laughs> yeah, Imani, yeah. I'm familiar with this guy. Um, he's right, man. Mean? He came out. He had a lot of hype earlier, and then, you know, obviously situations happen, but – um, the talent there, scoring talent is there. Um, you know, I think he just needs an opportunity to get to the right environment. He, he talented. He can, he, he can score basketball. So he's definitely an NBA player and he's a pro um, talent-wise for a long time. It's just, you know, being in that right environment, being in that right culture, the right fit for him, I think will determine you know, to, to what level he is able to play in the NBA. Interesting. That's develop his, you know, his um, size and strength a little more. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. yeah. to withstand the rigors of an NBA season, but you know, a lot of guys have to do that. But the scoring time is there. Yeah. Then we also have our uh, our international stash who could be coming over as well. Pet- Petrusev is his name. Um, so that's also we all we, we got we got we got some options. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Rate. Late seconds in the international stash. So, or, or at least a trade chip. Someone put in a trade. We'll, yeah. we'll see. I mean, work, and we'll see what he does with <laughs> uh, two, two priorities right now. So, we'll see. I, I, yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll see you guys next week, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you next time. All right, take it easy. Bye, wrong, guys. Bye.